This is Math 142, and this is uh, section 7.5. This is part one of uh, 7.5. And we're going to uh, keep solving trig equations, but we're going to deal with when the period isn't 2 pi. We still want our solutions to fall in 0 to 2 pi. But notice this sign of 3 theta equals 1 half. Remember what that 3 does is that 3 makes it happen, make it, makes it go three times as fast. So the actual period of this, if I think about this, is 2 pi divided by 3. So um, this will repeat itself in a shorter period of time than just sine theta repeats itself in. So this period is 2 pi over 3. So actually, whereas if I was, si if I was just solving this, I would know that I would get um, two answers. This is going to happen three times in that 2 pi, so I'm actually going to get six answers for this, six base answers for this. And it's actually 0 to 2 pi, it's telling me to keep my range in there, so I don't need to worry about going past 2 pi. So let's think about this graphically before we jump into it um, algebraically, into solving it algebraically. So sine of 3 theta equals 1 half. So here I have um, a graph, I'm in Desmos. You can see that I'm in radians, and I set my, my step uh, for x to pi over 3, just so, just so I could see it. So let me graph sine of 3x. We were using, um, what were we using? We were using theta, but in this case, I'm just going to graph it as x. And we wanted to know when this is equal to 1 half. So notice that right here, it hits 1 half a bunch of times. Look at this. Uh, if I get out to 2 pi, this hits 1 half, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times before we get to 1 half. So I'm going to have 6 answers here. And again, that's because it's, it's going 3 times as fast. And if I can get in on where these answers are at, well, let, me, let me change up this step a little bit. Um, 12 isn't even big enough. There we go. I can get pretty granular. There's my pi over 18. And notice it happens here, height of 1 half, and then happens here again at 5 pi over 18. And I can keep going and see where it keeps happening. So let's figure out how to do this algebraically. So let's just sign, the, uh, sign this. Let's just solve this like regular. So sine of something is 1 half. So this something has to equal the thing that I input into sine to give me one half. So I'm gonna I'm gonna look at this up. Sine of what is one half? I could peek over at my at my unit circle, um, or I have it memorized. I know that sine's about height one half, and that happens at pi over six, five pi over six. Now remember back to the last section, if we wanted all the possibilities here, we would add um, two k times pi to both of these values. It, it would have gotten added to this and to this. So let's keep going from here. Um, so if 3 theta equals these, if I want to know what theta is, I divide everything by 3. Or multiply by a third, same thing. So I'm going to multiply everything in here by a third. So that gives me a theta over here. And now pi over 16 times, I'm sorry, pi over 6 times a third is pi 18. There's my 18. This is also going to be 5 pi over 18. But notice this is going to get multiplied by a third as well. So 2k pi over 3, or I could think of this as 2 pi over 3 k's. So notice what I have is this 2 pi over 3. That's its, that's its period. That's when it starts to repeat itself. I peek back at that graph. This distance from here to here is 2 pi over 3. So if I'm here at I'm sorry here at one half if I go to pi over three there's another height that's at one half so what I can do is just keep adding two pi over threes to these values until I get past two pi so I have this uh, pi over 18 five pi over 18 and two pi over three it doesn't help me being in in terms of thirds because this is in terms of of eighteenths so I'm going to think of this, multiply it by 6 over 6, because that gives me 12 pi over 18. Cool, so I'm just going to be adding 12 pi over 18 to these. And what's nice about, since they're over 18, they're all going to be over 18. And I could just go plus 12 pi. 
So that gives me a 13 pi. And then add 12 pi to this one. Uh, 12 pi over 18. It gives me that. Now if I think about, um, you know, being over 18, 2 pi would be the same as whatever 18 times 2 is, 36 pi over 18. So I just don't want to go past that 36 pi over 18. That's the end of my limit for finding my solutions, you know, because that's given in the directions. So notice what I did is I added the 12 pi over 18, or 2 pi over 3, did it again. I'm just, so there's two of them, once through, twice through. I'm going to do one more, so add it again, and add it again, and I'll have all my answers. So uh, 13 plus 12 pi over 18, and then 17 plus 12 pi. And notice if I do it again, if I were to add 12 pi again, I would be past the, the 36. Like 12 plus 25 is 37. So there are all six of my answers within this that would make this correct. Because notice what this does. When you plug in pi over 18, it gets multiplied by 3 then sine of that is one half. These values are all in that range zero to two pi, so that's where I have them all. Another thing to hold on to, if this makes it happen three times faster, that means we should get three times the number of answers as if it had just gone around once. Cosine of pi over three is equal to root two over two. So our solutions are still need to be in this range, 0 to 2 pi. That's just a condition that was tacked on. This, this isn't always the case, but we'll test under these conditions. So this pi over 3, if I take the cosine of it, it gives me root 2 over 2. So cosine of these values will give me root 2 over 2. So I can look that up on my, on my unit circle. That's a width of root 2 over 2. And they are uh, pi over 4 and the other one would be 7 pi over 4. And we know that that's plus 2k pi. So again, if I go cosine of these values, they're going to spit out root 2 over 2. What I want to do then is figure out what theta must be. So this is divided by 3, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. Notice over here I get a theta. Now if I multiply this by 3, that would be 3 pi over 4. If I multiply by this by 3, that would be 21 pi over 4. And if I multiply uh, this by 3, that'd be 6 k pi. Remember, what this does is slows it down, it makes it go a third as fast. It stretches it out in this direction. So I, since it's stretched out, I don't think I'm going to be adding. If I add 6 pi's, I'm definitely going to be past 2 pi. 2 pi, if I think about in terms of fourths, that's 8 pi over 4. So this one's in there, but that one's outside of it. So I don't even need to worry about it. In this range, this one only has one answer. Solve this. We'll subtract 1 from both sides. Divide by root 3. So now notice the 2 theta is inside the tangent. So we're going to undo the tangent first. So we're going to look for values that... Um, if we were to go tangent of them, they would give us negative 1 over, over root 3. And 2 theta is going to be equal to those things. Let's take a peek at the unit circle to think, think about this one. So we were trying to uh, find tangent of something gives us negative 1 over root 3. We know tangent is sine over cosine, right, y over x. So notice the root 3 would have come from the x. So we want negative, so the signs are opposite of each other. Where the x part is root 3, because notice this would be negative 1 half over root 3 over 2. The 1 halves cancel, leaving with that. So it's here, and then it's also here. So 5 pi over 6, 11 pi over 6. And we know the answers beyond that will be of that form plus 2k times pi. Now this 2 theta, remember what this does is this makes it happen twice as fast. So we should have a four answers. So let's go with this. Um, two theta is equal to these things. So I could multiply everything by a half in order to solve for theta. So this multiplied by a half would be 5 pi over 12. This multiplied by a half would be 11 pi over 12. This multiplied by a half would just be pi. 
So we're going to add versions of pi until we are past 2 pi. And if we think about that in terms of twelfths, that would be 24 twelfths. I mean, you know, that's the top end. We don't want to go past that. Just adding pi would be adding 12 pi over 12. So if I add that to this, 17 pi over 12. If I add it to this, 23 pi over 12. And if I go any further than that, I'll be past 24 pi over 12. So there are my four answers to that one. So let's go ahead and solve this one. And as I'm looking at it, I see the, uh, the two theta in here. So I'm suspecting four answers. I'm expecting that because it's from 0 to 2 pi. Um, I notice it's negative 2 times this cosine of 2 theta. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 2 first. And if I do that, that would give me cosine of 2 theta equals negative root 3 over 2. Right? Negative divided by a positive is negative. So cosine of 2 theta would be negative root 3 over 2. I can look that up. I'm going to think about what cosine values give me a negative root 3 over 2. I can take a peek on my um, unit circle for that, or I can just know it. But it's uh, 5 pi over 6 and 7 pi over 6. And both of those would repeat themselves every, every 2 pi. So I'm going to keep going from here to solve for theta. This is 2 times theta, so multiply both sides by a half. What I love about this, you know, is if I just multiply by a half, that's just doubling the denominator. So this would be 5 pi over 12, 7 pi over 12, plus, and if I multiply this by a half, this would just be k times pi. So as I do that, let me get all of my solutions. Theta is uh, 5 pi over 12, 7 pi over 12. There's two of my answers. I'm going to add pi to both of those, and pi, I can think of pi as 12 pi over 12. So plus 12, 17 pi over 12, uh, plus 12, 19 pi over 12. And now what I'd like to do is use my calculator to, to check if I'm right or not. So I'll just check the first one, 5 pi over 12. So my equation was uh, negative 2 times cosine of 2 times 5 pi over 12. And that should equal square root of 3. So if I hit equals right now, I don't know, is that square root of 3? Let's see, square root of 3. It sure is. And so I got that 5 pi over 12 is one of my answers. Um, another answer that I got, let me peek over here, uh, 7 pi over 12. So I'm going to go what is the last couple things I typed? Boom, edit this back to a 7. Yeah, that's that's square root of 3. So I could keep checking them all if I wanted to, or I could just t check a couple to, uh, to feel comfortable about it. So last example like this, let's go ahead and solve this. And notice it's uh, my sine is theta over 2, so it's slowed down. It's stretched in this direction. So I expect to have at most two solutions. So let's solve this. Subtract that root 3 from both sides. Negative root 3 divided by that 2 since it's 2 times that value. Negative root 3 over 2. And now what I'm looking for is what sine values would spit out negative root 3 over 2. I either know it or I look it up on the unit circle. Remember that's about height. So pi over 2 would be um, 7 pi over 6. I'm sorry, theta over 2. Or it would also be 11 pi over 6. And remember those repeats themselves every 2k times pi times. So these are the things that pi over 2 is. So if I, I'm theta over 2 is. So if I want to know what theta is, multiply both sides by 2. And I get theta equals this times 2 is. Uh, if I divide, if I multiply it by 2, I could cut that denominator in half. So 7 pi over 3, 11 pi over 3. And if I double this, it's 4k times pi. So I'm not going to be adding 4k's. That'll kick me past uh, 2 pi. But let me think about this. 2 pi in terms of thirds is 6 pi over 3. These are both bigger than that. I throw them all out, and I can just say no solution. 
in, and remember this no solution means in this range right there are solutions they're just outside of this 0 to 2 pi that's been specified for us all right give these a try really think about how that period is shifted by that multiplier inside the function and how it changes our answers the frequency of our answers uh, post stuff in the forums or message me if you have any questions <laughs>